Welcome friends and visitors in Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and today we're going to talk about how you can use a complimentary underpainting to make your paintings pop. And why is it that sometimes you can see an artist and their painting is just so full of color and you wonder why yours might look maybe a little drab and dull? Well, complimentary underpaintings are a way that you can create that pizzazz and burst of color in your artwork. So I want to go into a couple of little uh, articles and things I can show you before we get to the painting today that may help you understand it better. Now first, in order to understand how to use complementary colors as an underpainting, we have to first know what complementary colors are. If you just think of the word complementary as a compliment, but it's actually the opposite <laughs> or um, directly across on the color wheel. So if we're going to have a painting with mostly uh, blues and greens, which happens to be a lot of landscapes, which we focus on a lot in my channel, the opposite on the color wheel of those colors is going to be warmer tones, more in this side. So that's all, it's not hard knowing what complementary colors are, it's just the opposite of the whatever it is on the side of the color wheel, okay? So if you're doing cooler and greens, you're going to get more of the warmer yellows, oranges, reds, and magentas, okay? So those are the colors we focus on when doing a complementary underpainting. Now this is an article that I found on the Artist Network website. It is a great description of how this particular artist uses complementary underpaintings. It's uh, by Michael Chesley Johnson, the artist. And uh, let me just show you real quickly. I'll provide the um, link in the about section of this video. Uh, but you see this painting that, you know, it has a lot of greens and blues in it, but it's so interesting and so um, intriguing with color. You can kind of see the bits of the red beneath that foreground tree. But he goes on to explain how he approaches a complementary underpainting. First, he has his photo, and uh, he goes into um, details about how he looks for the values. Then he gets his initial sketch in, you know, how he chooses his composition. And then now, notice these complementary colors that he's used. He has the... Um, the darker values, of course, for the trees, the vertical uh, trees, anything vertical is always a little darker, and the reds and this burgundy here is the darkest value. He's got his yellows for the sky and the water, and he's got his uh, medium values more for the land. So that's kind of a, a basic idea of how to get down complementary colors. And like I did in my video, uh, he also does an alcohol wash. I think he actually does a turpenoid wash. Uh, what that does is it sets the color so that when you go back over it with your past pastel, you're not going to get the bleeding or the uh, blending of the pastels together. Uh, the video um, that I'm making here of my painting that I just recently did, I did not do an alcohol wash, and you will notice the, uh, the blending of colors. I was kind of in a hurry, but you see how these colors just start to pop when you put it on top of that complimentary underpainting? It's just beautiful. So let's get started, and I will show you my technique, and I hope you learned something. All right. Now here I'm just basically laying down a sketch as a guideline. I'm using UART sanded paper, 400 grit, and a reference photo from a site I use often, Paint My Photo, and it's uh, www.pmp-art.com. You can find some great reference photos on this website. And I'm just basically getting in the generalities here. You don't want to get too specific with this. I liked this uh, photo already because it had a good composition to begin with. It was very nicely divided with uh, uh, the rule of thirds that I talk about often. The back horizon line is in the, where the water or, or the land meets the sky, is in the upper third. And uh, that group of grasses um, that's going across the painting in the foreground is in the lower third. And uh, so I'm just basically getting in some general shapes, always working um, big or less detailed to more detailed, and the sketch shouldn't be that detailed at all. And this is a, a new pastel, NU pastel. It's a harder pastel that I'm using just to get the sketch in. Sometimes it's good too to establish some of those darks just to get an idea of uh, where things are. Now here I am using the complementary colors that I spoke about before on the warmer side or the opposite side on the color wheel of the blues and greens and I'm using the the darker colors this is I sped this up a little bit the darker reds will be anything vertical trees and grasses are always going to be darker in value and the sky and the water is in the yellow that's a lighter value the sky and the water is almost always the lightest thing in a landscape painting 
And of course you see that oranges, orange and pinks I used are going to be the, uh, the ground, okay? Uh, they're a medium value. Now I'm just going ahead and laying in some of the, the colors. I went ahead and got down um, the underpainting. And uh, I want you to notice too that I did not on this particular painting do what I often do, which is called a, a alcohol wash, or you can use water or terpenoid. I've never used it before, but I've heard you can. And uh, you basically do a, a wet wash over your underpainting before you start laying down the other colors. As you notice, I did not do that here. It was a little bit of just a time constraint. I really do like adding the alcohol wash because it sets your underneath colors so they don't blend as much with the colors that you're starting to lay down. So as you can see, I'm just getting the values in now and getting my general idea in. And I apologize for the speed video. I know a lot of you ask about real-time videos, and I promise I'm trying to get back to that. Um, many of you know my life was a little turned upside down due to our home flooding and my art studio flooding uh, when Hurricane Irma was here. So my family is, uh, we're still getting everything together, but I try to sneak in a little painting here and there. And I absolutely love being able to pop into the Monet Cafe art group on Facebook. Please join us if you haven't already. It's just a great place to learn and grow and just experience beauty. There's wonderful artists of every level on there. And the thing I love about the group is that no one ever feels, uh, or they shouldn't feel, very quickly they feel welcome. They shouldn't feel inferior if they're just beginning in their pastel art journey. So the group makes everybody new feel welcome and there is never a question that is not a good one to ask. You can ask anything in that in that uh, group. So please just come on over to the Monet Cafe Art Group in Facebook. Now you can see here I'm laying down some of the, you notice that the greens on top of that orangey color underpainting and uh, a little bit of the cooler greens and blues and uh, now I'm working on the water a little bit. So this is gonna be a little bit of a faster tutorial here, again, for time constraints, but you're getting the idea of how you start with the warmer tones and then you just gradually start adding uh, more local color, which means the color that's natural to the scene, uh, on top of your underpainting. Now, a lot of you know, if you've been around my channel very often, I get a little creative with color. As long as you get the value right, you can do that. For example, uh, there's in the reference photo, there's no pink in the sky, and there's none of those really rich pink magentas in the trees, but the value is close, so you know you can do that. And um, I, I just love to explore with color. It's part of the fun of painting. So enjoy the rest of this painting, and uh, I hope to upload another video soon. At the end of this painting, I, I had a correction I had to make. So I show how you can kind of erase a pastel painting. I won't show it in this video, but it's coming up soon. So you know, you don't have to be so afraid if you do something wrong. You can, you have some uh, degree of correction when you're pastel painting. So enjoy guys, and I am just happy to be making a video or two here and there. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, or my channel, please do. And uh, click the little bell icon if you want to get notified of upcoming videos. So join us if you would like and uh, enjoy any upcoming videos. And I am so happy to be back creating in Monet Cafe. Happy painting!